Hi, Gabriel's here, wilderness survival expert. Now, as you can see, we're stuck in the middle of the Floridian wilderness, miles from any- Hi, Gabriel's here, and as you can see, we're stuck in the middle of the Saharan wilderness. And I'm gonna show you how to survive miles from civilization with nothing but your brain, wit, and what you have around you in nature. So the first thing we're gonna need is our survival guide. In here, we have everything we need to survive. What the fuck is this? Anyways, here's the computer that where you downloaded the sum total of all human knowledge ahead of time, just in case something like this happened. And all we need is this, our cell phone, a source of power, and some very high-tech cables, which I appear to have forgotten. So we're gonna see if we can't scavenge some of those things up here in the middle of the wilderness. But I think that's everything we need to survive. So now we're on the lookout for an Ethernetus ugundus. This is a rare tree that only grows in the middle of the Siberian rainforests. We specifically need one that is a USB on the other side, which only happens when they get cross-pollinated. Ah, I think we've got one right here. But you can tell that this one is a little bit immature. It's not quite ready to be picked yet because it doesn't have the user manual or the packaging that you'd normally see in some place like Best Buy. Oh my fucking God. It's beautiful. This is exactly what we need. This is our key to survival right here. I'm just gonna delicately pick this from the tree. Thank you, tree. You've been good to us. I'm just gonna put this in our survival bag. God damn it. So the last thing we need is a source of power. But when you're in the Pacific Alps, sometimes when the thunder hits the beach sand just perfectly, it makes these towering lithium obelisks full of electricity. And I think, I think I see one over there. God, it's beautiful. Now the problem with these buggers is that I can never quite seem to get them out of the ground. This happens to me every time. I find them and then I just can't get them out. Perfect, I think I got it. So now all we need to do is put this whole thing together. So we've got the lithium obelisk right here and I've got the ethernet berries that we picked from before and uh, whatever the hell that is and our computer. So we're gonna put this together. And this goes on this side. Now, all we have to do is pull up Wikipedia Come up to the search bar, type in wilderness survival, and let's see what they've got on it. Ooh, that looks like a good article. Well, you know, best of luck to Mr. Brills out there. He's uh, currently beta testing my latest crazy idea which was originally inspired by going through my hurricane emergency survival kit and realizing that while I have lots of materials and tools, I don't really have lots of guides. So after I ordered guides on first aid and survival, I decided that I wanted to see if I could just, you know, put a bow tie on this whole thing and download Wikipedia, which as you guys know, is the sum total of all human knowledge, basically. So I figured, you know, if I've got first aid and how to survive, the next step is how to rebuild all of civilization and Thankfully, I was able to fit all of that right here onto this little guy. So this is a BeagleBone Black. It's a tiny computer that runs Linux. I mean, it's literally got like a USB port on that side and some Ethernet and more USB on that side. But yeah, it's just a tiny little computer. So obviously the elephant in the room is, uh, how big do you guys think Wikipedia is? I mean, we're talking every single English article, not only text, but also all images and media associated with it. Only the latest version though. I mean, I, I fit all of it onto this little guy, but there is there is certainly a lot there, so I'll give you guys a minute to think on that. So right off the bat, I've got this beagle bone over here. Now, I replaced the default image, which was Debian, with Arch, because Arch takes up way less space. I then installed Docker on Arch and set it to start up whatever configuration was on the SD card, which is nice, because it means the SD card is entirely self-contained now. Whatever tools that I need to do this project live on the SD card, and when I swap the SD card for another one, the new tools are on the new one. It's also really nice because Docker basically gives you an entirely version controlled environment from like the OS's that you're running all the way up. So it should make it really easy on you guys to 
be able to use this project if you want to. Uh, GitLab link is in the description, so feel free to try this for yourselves. After that, I basically created a service to download Wikipedia as a torrent, and then another one to give me a status readout, because downloading all of Wikipedia does take quite a while. I mean, we're talking like at least 10 minutes here. Torrenting is really nice, because it's usually faster and it actually saves Kiwix bandwidth. Basically, instead of downloading only straight from Kiwix, you can download from anyone else who's currently uploading it as well. So, I mean, again, it saves them bandwidth, which is nice because they're offering all this to me for literally free. And on top of that, it tends to be a little bit faster. And when I was done, I checked the stats and I had only used 40% of the SD card, which is absolutely insane. I had way overestimated how big every single article in English, including images, was gonna be. Uh, turns out it was only like 90 gigs. So after that, I was basically done and I set up the Kiwix server to serve the archive that I downloaded and then set it up to seed Wikipedia out to anyone else who wants to download it. And then I sat down and contemplated my life choices. And as an engineer, I found myself to be quite disappointed in myself and I decided to reconcile that by doing what anyone else in my shoes would do, and just downloading absolutely anything that you can think of until you've used up all of the remaining space on the SD card. Stack Overflow was the next thing on my hit list. It was about another 90 gigabytes, but this time it was supposed to take 174 hours to download because there were so few people uploading it. But on the upshot, I'm now seeding that and everything else I could think of to whoever wants it, so if you guys come after me, it should not take 174 hours for you guys, hopefully. Oh, and I 3D printed this nice little case for the beagle bone while I waited for all of that to download. So I mean, yeah, you know, at that point, I kind of thought I was done, right? I'd done the hard part. I downloaded all of Wikipedia, taken advantage of the free space that I still had left after downloading Wikipedia, and had Docker set up to serve the offline archives of all of those websites, as well as seed them out to anyone else looking to get them. Except, wait, how was I going to actually get the information off the beagle bone. I mean, I, I said earlier that if the internet just went out, I can use any other device on my local network to connect to it to get access to those web pages. But the original thought came to me because I was trying to like supplement a hurricane survival kit. So if a hurricane comes and the power and the internet go out, obviously I'd no longer have a local network or devices to use it. And that's gonna be a problem. So my first idea was that I probably didn't need any other devices. I could just grab a touch screen that I happen to have lying around, plug it into the beagle bone, and hopefully just use things directly off of there. But immediately there was the problem that that was already way too demanding and way too power hungry on the beagle bone, which lacks a lot of computing power and just wasn't really all around effective. I also considered that my phone has been fundamentally optimized for battery life, already has a screen built in and already has you know, a touch screen keyboard and all of the other smaller things that I was gonna have to build around this. So I decided my second take was gonna be just pop the SD card out of BeagleBone and plug it into my phone. Kiwix actually runs on Android, so I should be able to just point the offline archive on the web browser to Kiwix installed on my phone and call it a day, except that somewhere between Kiwix and Google's Android, um, I can't do that. <laughs> They, they cannot read archives off of USB storage and my S21 doesn't have any internal SD card slots. So that was shot down. My third try was to grab a USB-C to A adapter and plug that into my phone so that I could then plug my phone into the USB port on the BeagleBone, which should show up as a virtual ethernet card. At least that's how it showed up when I plugged it into my computer. That's how it showed up everywhere else. That's what the instructions said it should show up as. Um, but for some reason, my phone, like, wouldn't recognize it at all. I couldn't even see that it recognized something was plugged in. And that's when I realized that I didn't just need a USB-C cable, I needed a USB-C on the Go cable, an OTG cable. Because an OTG cable lets devices like phones act as both clients and hosts when they need to via the USB standard, whereas normal cables only let you act as one or the other. I don't entirely understand it, but there is a physical difference in the pinout. So I waited another several days as Amazon gave me an OTG USB-C cable and I finally plugged it in and it didn't fucking work either. God, the USB standard is so fucking dumb. So when that didn't work, I said, screw USB entirely. I'm just gonna grab a USB-C to ethernet cable and I'm going to plug the ethernet cable into the BeagleBone. I know my S21 supports ethernet. I know the BeagleBone supports ethernet. Done. 
So I went out and I bought this wonderful adapter that gives me USB-C to both ethernet and USB-C power delivery, which in my head, I should have been able to use to both power the Beagle Bone via the USB-C rail and also exchange data with it over ethernet. But once again, the USB gods decided to cock block me there too, because the power delivery bus doesn't support discharging from my phone. It only supports charging the phone. So the setup I finally ended up with is a battery pack plugged into the Beagle Bone that powers the Beagle Bone, and the Beagle Bone can then be connected to my phone via fucking ethernet. And then I can usually get my phone to connect to the Beagle Bone and things work out well. So I mean, on one hand, that is a very frustrating, overly complicated process, but on the flip side, I mean, if you don't have power and internet and you really need to like know some random tidbit of knowledge, uh, I mean, it's a small price to pay to have all of human knowledge directly at your fingertips. So I, I really don't know how this one panned out. Hopefully I can come back at some point, make it cleaner, but I don't, I don't feel like it right now. But yeah, after the whole USB power delivery debacle got itself sorted out, um, that's, that's it. That's how you download the sum total of all human knowledge onto a computer about the size of a credit card, if not many times thicker than that. A Raspberry Pi should be really similar. I don't personally have one to test on, but they're both ARM Linux systems that can run Docker. And once you can run Docker, you can run these SD cards that I have. Really, they're just Docker images. So it, it should work the same. It actually should work better on a Raspberry Pi because it's got more compute power. You probably could just plug in the touch screen and have it work just fine. So uh, if one of you guys has a Raspberry Pi, definitely try this out. And for anyone who wants to try this out, the link to the GitLab is in the, uh, is in the description. So... I don't know, feel free to do whatever you want to with this information. That's all I got, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day, and if it's Friday, have a great weekend. Catch you guys in the next video.